Hello guys, welcome back to the 11th part of the Kotlin UP2 Pro series. In the last part you learned about the read line function and nullable values. So we asked the user to enter something at the console and the result will be saved in the user input variable. Then we check if that user input is not null, so if everything went right. And if it did, then we will print the user input minus 5. So we actually want the user to input a number here and we will print the result of that number minus 5. In this video you will learn about arrays which is a way to save several objects inside of only one object. To do that I delete the code of the last video and I create a new variable. Well I call it my array, you can call it whatever you want, is equal to and now there is a function that creates an array for us which is called array of parentheses and inside of that parentheses we have to pass all the numbers we want to have in our array and inside of that parentheses we write all the numbers we want to have in our array separated by commas so for example I write 3, 2, 6 and 4 so an array is basically just a container for several objects of a type so Inside of that array, we only save integer numbers, but we could also save strings inside of that. For example, if we remove that and save hello, separate that with a comma again and write guys, comma, what's up. That would also work. And we could even mix those types up. So I could also enter a three here. So that would be an array of two strings and an integer here. But I don't recommend you to do that. That is almost every time a bad idea to mix those types up because that can lead to many problems later, but technically it's possible. So for now I will undo this and show you that this array is comparable to when I would write, well, first is equal to hello well second is equal to guys and well third is equal to what's up. So this array is basically just a container for several single objects that are wrapped together inside of one object. So let's remove this and I show you what happens if we want to print that array. Print line my array. I run the program And you can see it prints some strange stuff here, which actually gives us some information about our array. So we see it's a string array, and that is actually the memory address of our array. So at which place in memory it is saved, but that's really not important for us. And why this doesn't work is because the print line function doesn't provide the option to print an array in human readable format. So we would like to have a function that prints hello, guys and what's up one after each other, but the print line function doesn't provide that method. And that is actually something I want to show you in the next few videos. But for now, we can access single objects of the array here by writing square brackets after the array object here. And now we have to insert an index and in programming indexes always start at zero. So this is the array at index zero, this is index one, and this is index two. So whatever we write here will be printed out. So let's start by zero and run the program. And as you can see now it prints hello because hello is in the array at index zero. If we swap this zero with a one here for example and run the program again, you see now it prints guys because guys is in the array at index one. And if we write three, for example, and run the program, you see that it throws us an error message here because index three out of bounds for length three. He says the, the array has the length three, it has three elements in it, and we want to access the array at index three which doesn't exist because the highest index of the array is two, which is what's up. And we want to access it at index three, which doesn't exist. So it will crash. 
So you will always have to consider that when you work with arrays. Actually, for now, I can't give you a real homework about arrays because for now, I only showed you how you can create an array and how to access the single elements at it. But in the next videos, this will change because I will show you some more cool things you can do with arrays and then you will get real homeworks again. Finally, I want to show you the solution of the last homework where we should let the user input his age in the console and then print a different line according to his age. So first we just print a line for the user to let him know that he should enter his age here and then we save the entered age in the variable age. So the read line function will block the program until the user will enter his age. We have to make that question mark there because that read line function can return null so there can be something wrong with the console and then we call the two integer method on that because if the user enters something in the console it will be a string and to actually calculate with that and compare values we have to convert that string to an integer. Then we check if that h is not equal to null here so if everything went right if it did, then this code block will be executed and inside of that code block we have another if statement where we first check if the age is greater or equal than 0 and the age is less than 18, then it should print you're not an adult yet. If the age is greater or equal than 18 and the age is less or equal than 65, then it should print you are an adult. And in all other cases, it should print you are really, really old because then the user is older than 65. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you like it. And if so, please leave a comment. And also, if you have any questions, don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.